To the channel everyone it is i your host mr sean and welcome to the first episode of urban legends from around the world in this series i will cover urban legends from all 50 states and the world beyond and for our inaugural episode i thought what better than to tell you some urban legends of my beloved home state of Ohio. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And with that being said, let's begin. Starting off our inaugural episode is the Grassman of Ohio. The Buckeye State's own Bigfoot said to roam the areas of the Shawnee Forest and the Appalachian Mountains. The Grassman is a large humanoid covered in dark, shaggy fur. Said to range between six and nine feet tall, being quite an imposing figure. The exact origins of the Grassman legend are difficult to pinpoint, as tales of this creature have existed in various forms and folklore around the entire world for centuries. However, this specific cryptid, the Grassman of Ohio, is believed to have emerged in the 19th and 20th century, with reported sightings and encounters becoming more prevalent during this time. Much like his Washington cousin, one of the most prolific pieces of evidence for the Grassman's existence are the large footprints he leaves behind. Next up, we have the Loveland Frog. This cryptid of Ohio folklore first made its appearance in Loveland, Ohio in the 1950s. First sighted by a businessman traveling along an unnamed road late at night in 1955, the man said he spotted three figures that stood erect on their hind legs along the side of the road, each three to four feet tall, with leathery skin and frog faces. In some versions of the legend, one of them held a wand over its head that was firing a spray of sparks. The creature was said to be spotted again in the 1970s, though this was later said to have actually been a tailless iguana. Whether or not a group of frogmen make their home near Loveland, Ohio, the town has embraced the idea, making the Loveland Frog their official mascot in 2023. Third on our list, we have the Melonheads. The Melonheads of Ohio are most commonly associated with the Cleveland suburb of Kirtland in Lake County. According to local lore, the Melonheads were originally orphans under the care and watch of a mysterious figure known as Dr. Crow, or on occasion, Dr. Melonhead. Crow is said to have performed unusual experiments on the children, who developed large, hairless heads and malformed bodies. Some accounts claim that the children were already suffering from hydrocephalus and that Crow injected even more fluid into their brains. The legend goes on to state that eventually the children killed Crow, burned the orphanage, and retreated to the surrounding forest and supposedly feed on babies. 
Legend holds that the melon heads may be sighted along Wisner Road in Kirtland, an adjacent Chardon Township in Geauga County. The Melonhead legend has been popularized on the internet, particularly on the websites Creepy Cleveland and Dead Ohio, where users can offer their own version of the tale. At number four, we have the legend of the Crybaby Bridge. While there are many supposed Crybaby Bridges in Ohio, the most infamous is the one located off of Egypt Road in Salem, Ohio, near the Mahoning County line. This abandoned road and bridge is associated with the screams of a baby late at night, though the specifics of the legend vary. One legend claims a mother threw her baby over the bridge late at night because she was disowned by her family for having the child out of wedlock. Another claims that a couple once lost their child along this road while they were stopped at the bridge. Some say the child drowned beneath the bridge, while others say it just wandered off. Whatever the story, many say you can still hear the child's cries at night. Still, Another rumor claims that if you cross the abandoned bridge and follow the road to nowhere, you will disappear. At number five, we have Helltown, Ohio. Originally named Boston, Ohio, Helltown, a now abandoned town, is purportedly teeming with its own crybaby bridges spooked school buses, scenes of mass human sacrifice, and even a mutant python for good measure. Among the abandoned buildings of this town is an old Presbyterian church known as the Mother of Sorrows Church. This abandoned church, adorned with upside-down crosses, is said to have been a place where Satanists would gather and commit atrocities including human sacrifices. Also in Helltown lies the remains of an abandoned and rusted school bus. Many say that the children who once were driven to and from school were murdered by a killer who still inhabits the area. Should you find yourself coming upon it on a trip to Helltown, it is said that if you look through the windows, you can see the ghostly victims. Helltown's abandonment is attributed to a chemical spill in the area that caused the government to force people from their homes in an attempt to cover up the damage. While this accident is said to have caused numerous health problems to the inhabitants, not all the victims were human. Tales of a local snake dubbed the Peninsula Python is said to have grown to an enormous size and that it still slithers around Helltown to this day. It's hard to say if the legends surrounding Helltown are true or pure folklore, but either way, I don't think I'll be stopping in on my next road trip. Number six on our list is the Gore Orphanage, located near Vermilion, Ohio. The story goes that this orphanage burned down in the early 1900s, tragically killing all the children inside. Visitors to the site have reported hearing the cries and screams of the children. Ghostly apparitions are often spotted here, and some claim to even have encountered the restless spirits of the children who perished in the fire. At number seven, we have the Ridges Asylum. Located in Athens, Ohio, above Ohio University, the Ridges is a former mental asylum with a dark history. One of the most famous legends involves the ghost of Margaret Schilling, a patient who disappeared and was found dead weeks later. 
her body left a permanent stain on the floor, and it said, her spirit still haunts the building. For number eight, we travel back to the suburb of Kirtland. Beside having melon-head infested woods, Kirtland is home to a grave marked by a large, spherical tombstone known as the Witch's Ball. Legend has it that the ball marks the grave of a witch, and it is said to be cursed. Some believe the ball moves on its own, and that touching it can bring bad luck or misfortune. If you're ever in Kirtland, perhaps you should test this legend for yourself, if you're brave enough. At number 9, we have the Ohio State Reformatory in Mansfield, Ohio. Said to be one of the most haunted places in the state, built in the late 19th century, this former prison is said to be haunted by the spirits of former inmates and staff. Visitors have reported seeing shadowy figures, hearing disembodied voices, and feeling cold spots. I myself once took a nighttime ghost tour of this facility. Let's just say, it was a hell of a time. And at number 10, we have the Headless Motorcyclist of Elmore, Ohio. In the town of Elmore, legend tells of a rebellious young man who fell in love with a farmer's daughter. The farmer did not approve of this match, so the daughter would wait until nighttime when her father was asleep, at which point she would signal her beau who would ride up on his motorcycle and whisk her away for a romantic night under the stars. Unfortunately, this love story has a tragic end. One night, while riding up to meet his beloved, the man was in a horrifying motorcycle crash that cleaved his head from his body. It is said his spirit now roams the night, searching for his lost head. And that, dear viewers, is our list. While I could make several more videos just about Ohio, I feel like I should spread the love around, so to speak. My goal for this series is to cover urban legends from all 50 states and then from countries all over the world. Which state do you think I should cover next? Please leave your suggestion in the comments. And while you're down there, be sure to leave your favorite local urban legend as well. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. My goal for this year is to get 1,000 subscribers and we are so very close. Until next time, I'm Mr. Sean. This is Chimera Miniatures. And I sincerely hope that you Alpha Great Day and an even beta tomorrow. Stay spooky, my friends. In the dark where whispers